Keepers of the Hearth, vintage photographs depicting domestic scenes from Saskatchewan history. Domestic scenes constitute an often neglected aspect of Saskatchewan history as documented in photographs. And yet they reflect the tenor of the times and the quality of existence, as do scenes of work, sports and recreation, architectural photos, landscapes and cityscapes, and wartime scenes. Here are gathered images focusing on domestic activities, such as the preparation and consumption of meals, home-centered recreation, farm and home chores, family portraits, and gatherings. It includes camping scenes from homesteading days, harvest lunch breaks, a raucous early picnic, and parent-child portraits. The setting for this rather somber 1938 Christmas photo appears to be a living room in a private home. However, the uniforms that three of the women are wearing, what might be a Salvation Army insignia on two of the women's collars, and the number of infants in the photo reveal its true location. The photo was taken in Bethany Hospital, a so-called rescue home for unmarried mothers and their children, who were likely adopted out. This is hardly a domestic scene in any traditional sense, but these Beaver Creek picnickers are certainly consuming the fruits of someone's domestic labors with great gusto. Clearly by the time this photo was taken, Saskatonians had abandoned the total temperance advocated by the colony's first settlers. Students at RJD Williams School for the Deaf gather for a meal. Older students sitting at the ends of each table were probably supposed to monitor the dining behavior of their younger charges. Cadets on laundry duty at a Sea Cadet League camp on Shepley Island. The island, now called Wilson Island, was in the South Saskatchewan River just west of the area now called Cranberry Flats. During the summers from 1943 to 1946, boys 12 and older in the Sea Cadet program attended two-week training camps on Shepley Island. Alvina and Peter Scottheim and four of their children at supper on their spruce home farm. Because it typified successful diversified farming in Saskatchewan, the Scottheim farm was included in Princess Margaret's itinerary when she visited in 1958. Consequently, the farm was besieged for weeks in advance of the July 31st visit by photographers, among them Leonard Hilliard, who captured this tranquil domestic scene. This image of a young mother and child was captured by Saskatoon photographer Peter Mackenzie. No information survives concerning their identity, although they are also seen in a communal context in the following Mackenzie photograph titled In the Lee of a Red River Cart. The term papoose, while common for the time in which the photo was created, has become offensive in modern language because it came to be used without regard for cultural context as a generalized term for indigenous children. These young women with their small children rest in the shade of an impromptu shelter provided by a Red River cart. Although the exact location, evidently on the prairie, isn't known, it was probably near Saskatoon, having been taken by Saskatoon photographer Peter Mackenzie. Sometime around 1910, a group of Indigenous people set up camp near Saskatoon for a few days. Ralph Dell, one of Saskatoon's earliest photographers, took a series of photos of the camp. This one captures the details of teepee construction and of the Red River carts, which were a common mode of transportation around this time. A moment of unselfconscious morning ritual captured the campsite in 1909. Records indicated that it was at Pike Lake. 
The name of the photographer is not documented, but since the donor was Saskatoon's own W. W. Ashley, he himself might have snapped the shutter. One of the women could be his wife, the former Dora Clingskill. She was the daughter of James Clingskill, one of Saskatoon's first mayors, and lived to the age of ninety-three. These young men appear to be in search of a keeper for their hearth, perhaps to free them up for lacrosse or hunting or drinking, while they wait for homesteads. A companion photo shows the same hornet's nest inhabitants in formal attire, and with no weaponry, sporting equipment, or booze in evidence. That photo may have been intended for parental viewing, while this one could have gone to buddies back home. In this charming studio photograph, Walter Willis poses with an infant, presumably his child, on his knee. Willis was one of the first elders of Knox Presbyterian, now Knox United, Church, and was a member of the church choir as well. Both Walter and the infant look somewhat startled, a common effect of a photographer's flash. Saskatoon's first professional photographer, Ralph Dill, took this photo of some of the city's early residents in front of their summer residence in Idlewild, about 1905. In the center, smiling at the camera, is Wyndham Winkler Ashley, a well-known horticulturalist and Parks Board member who was responsible for the distribution of elm tree seeds in the province. Others in the photograph include a Mr. Layden and a Mr. Brown. Doing the chores becomes a family photo opportunity in this 1914 shot of the Schrader family on their farm. Udo milks the cows, Helen hugs two of their daughters, and the third, a beribboned Leonora, crouches on the right. Little is known about this family scene, taken in the early days of the 20th century. But rare domestic photos such as these capture fleeting moments, otherwise undocumented, in the daily lives of our early residents. This one speaks volumes about forms of cultural entertainment in family life, and the furnishing and amenities enjoyed by reasonably well-off families. Frank Tyhurst of the Kensmith area poses in a cluttered room of a log house. A few domestic touches are apparent, oilcloth on the table, photos tacked on the walls. However, the general impression is that Frank was still roughing it to some extent, nailing his furs and catalogues to the wall and tossing bags of seed in the corner. A small child amongst feathered companions at a farm near Laura. The sod hut in the background is likely the chicken coop, as the more habitable wooden structure is just visible at right. For many homesteaders, a sod hut served as the family's first shelter, as this one may have done. The name Frank Hardy is inscribed on the back of the original photo. These happy campers may have been waiting for homesteads. In any case, they were camping in style, with a rocking chair, real beds with sheets and pillowcases, and a plank floor. Interior shots of tents like this one must be fairly rare. It was supposedly taken between the old Canadian Northern Railway Bridge and the Traffic Bridge on the Nutana side of the South Saskatchewan River in 1908. Victorian-style decor is typified in this shot of the home of Dr. Donald Mackenzie in what was then the 700 block on Broadway Avenue around 1912. His office was located in Clinkskill Chambers. Sharing the cozy family atmosphere are Mrs. Marion Mackenzie, seated, and Blanche MacDonald, one of the women standing. The two beribboned lasses may be his daughters or other relatives.
There is a reflective, if not wistful, quality to this woman's expression as she takes a break, possibly from unremitting domestic duties. The array of photos and postcards behind her suggests the significant role of the Postal Service as a communications link with the old country in those days. This lovely vignette personifies the best qualities of familiar relationships. The original photo has Lena and Nada written on the back and came to the local history room anonymously. Nothing else is known about it. The pause that refreshes for agricultural workers assisting in the harvest. The impish look on the face of the fellow at left may be attributed to the fact that the beverage he is receiving is coming from a bottle. Morning ablutions at a camp in the Idlewild area of Saskatoon around 1908. These men, like many others around that time, were probably waiting for homesteads, but seem to have adapted well to their temporary surroundings. A caravan in Saskatoon. An indigenous woman and child are posed before a covered wagon near the Tudhope Anderson Company, located on Avenue A South. The wagon may very well have contained the worldly possessions of this well-traveled mother and child. An indigenous woman makes bannock in a rustic Loon Lake campsite. Pots and pans are strung in the trees, as is a sleeping shelter at right. Steam rising from a large pot gives this hearth a warm, homey feeling. We hope you enjoyed our virtual adaptation of Keepers of the Hearth. The original gallery show was held from February 15th to March 26th, 1993. Please visit us in local history the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Central Library.